taking cash in your business and wondering if it's okay? Well, watch on. As business accountants, my team and I spend all day long helping business owners on their journey. And of course, one of the key things that pops up all the time, and you can see in the comments, it's a very common question, is, is it okay to take cash in my business? Sole trader, limited, does it make any difference? And how do I record those kind of transactions? Well, that's what I'm gonna cover in this video. Before I get into it though, if you like these type of videos, make sure to click the bell and the button below so you get notified whenever we release more videos just like this one. So is it okay? Well, the short answer is yes, it is okay. I think in a world where we've just come out of, or coming out of the back end of COVID and we're seeing a lot of reduction in cash during that period, because of the contactless idea and all the rest of it. It's not as common as it once was, but yeah, it's totally fine to use cash. And in actual fact, in a lot of businesses, they've always done that. Um, and there's various different reasons for that. I mean, the main one being, of course, is that you need the infrastructure to be able to take card payments. And with that infrastructure, so let's say your card machine comes a fee, someone's got to get paid for that. So uh, a lot of people just try to avoid those fees. They don't want it. And then there is a delay sometimes in getting that money as well through the processing people. So there are lots of reasons why people might want to be cash is not all underhand I'm sure historically that has gone on but in the real world these days I think a lot of people are just conscious of the charges what I would say on that though is this is a business yet yeah, normally costs you money to bank that cash somewhere so you do have to also weigh that up but generally yeah let's just say there are plenty of businesses out there that still want to use cash so to answer the question of whether it's okay yes it's okay the challenge is really is making sure you've got good records so I think we did another video on this but actually there is a, a revenue manual that w relates to records and it just basically says that look, you need to show what you've spent where. Because there are some times where you'll go to say, like, uh, you might shop a lot of secondhand places. You might do car boots and the like. And it's like, well, you're not going to get full itemized receipts from every trader there. But you might just take a little petty cash receipt around and just write down what you bought and where and everything else. And it's just a case of trying to keep as much evidence as possible. So if you've got those kind of manual records. But then outside of that is it's just keeping a log of it all. So whether you use spreadsheet records and you're just noting in your spreadsheet who's paying you the cash and when, or you're the other way around, you're paying out cash to people what did you buy, where, who, and you just try and keep as much detail as you can. So, you know, if you're doing something on Facebook Messenger and you're buying something secondhand, then you've got a bit of proof really in the Facebook messaging of where you bought it. And in your spreadsheet records, you'd put date, how much Facebook Messenger, you know, if you knew their name, whatever, in there, and, and that's generally okay. Now, the challenge in software is how do you enter that transaction? Well, actually, it's not a lot of difference. You might key on, and the terminology changes depending on the softwares. You might key on like a bill, it'll say add bill, and you add a bill for you know, Joe Blogs for uh, stock for 20 quid or whatever on there. So you've got this bill now that's sitting on the system that says it's 20 pound outstanding, you owe Joe Blogs 20 pound. Well, fine, you can mark on the bottom of that screen, there's the, you know, you can put date paid and there'll be an account, where did it go to? So obviously it's not a bank account, so you, normally you would have a cash account. And if you haven't got one, you would create one in the software, like a bank called cash. Uh, and then it deposits money in there. And if you go and look in the reports in the back end, you'll see there's a balance of cash. And what I would say is it's critically important to make sure that that balance of cash you're checking regularly. So one of the key things we see with clients who do their own bookkeeping is they'll come in at the end of the year, we'll say, sweet. So it says in here, you've got 8,000 pound in cash. Have you got 8,000 pound in cash? And nine times out of 10, the answer is no. And it's like, okay, well, what happened to the cash? And what we haven't entered is the transaction where the owner's taken that cash to live on, or they've used that cash then to go and buy things. But in terms of keeping it in your records in software, you're gonna have then, um, you're gonna have paid that bill off and you're gonna see that amount of cash has come out of the cash pot. So if you imagine if you keyed on an invoice to a customer, you'd do the same thing. You'd have your invoice on there for your customer or your sales receipt as it might be in some softwares, depending on how you use it, and you deposit that money into this cash account. And when you pay your bill out, you're gonna have it coming out of cash. So you've got money coming in, money coming out, and you'll have a balance, and you should check that balance regularly to make sure that actually that is correct, that is the actual balance. And if not, go back and try and find out where it's gone wrong. This is especially important in a limited company because in a, in a sole trader, the money's yours. You know What you really wanna know is, for tax purposes, what's your tax deductible expenditure, what's your taxable income, and the rest of it is nice to have, really. It's just like backup proof, decent accounting. But in a limited company, it really does matter as to whether it's your money, company's money, every pence matters, that full bookkeeping matters. So you wanna make sure that balance is right. Um, otherwise, you can have a problem with taxation on you as the director most probably. And again, that's where we see the most problems with clients bookkeeping in a limited company is they'll do like cash withdrawals from an ATM, for example. So they've taken 200 pound cash from, from the wall uh, and then they've gone and paid 180 to somebody and it's like, what happened to the 20 pound? So if you imagine at the end of the year, there's another 20 pound sitting in this cash balance that 
uh, when you say to the client that let's say they've done it multiple times over the years, there might be five hundred pound left of these twenty pounds, and they'd be like, "You got five hundred pound cash?" No. Uh, okay, well, you took £200 out of the wall. What was that for? Oh, £180. Yeah, I can see that. What happened to the other 20 And, you know, when you talk that through, the other 20 has gone in their pocket, bought pizza, bought curry, whatever, whatever your poison is. And, um, uh, and that's fine. You just need to note it in your records. And the same thing if you do it on your spreadsheet. You know, you're going to put 200 out of the wall, 180 for this, £20 for me, or whatever it's going to be. So just keep good records. Now there was a question about whether you actually need a bank account. So the answer will be no, there's no legal thing that says you need a bank account, but you've got to be practical about this. So many times you need to sign up for software or other subscriptions, generally people want access to your bank in terms of paying those things regularly. So practically it's a good idea. And you will have people who just don't want to pay or can't pay cash. I mean, I never walk around with cash. It just, it's not something that, that we get paid in very often. And as a result, I don't have it and I don't really want to go to the wall and draw it out. So if I was going to go pay for something, I wouldn't want to necessarily part with the cash. So from a practical side of things, people might want bank accounts, but there could be online ones. So we're seeing a lot of people will have like Revoluts, PayPals, those kind of things. And then you've got the online actual banks like your Starlings, your Monzos, those kind of people. So um, there are those other options as well. But you could in theory operate completely bank accountless as long as your records are good. And then finally, yeah, does it matter if it's sole trade or limited? No, we've mentioned that I think it's more important to keep even better records as limited, especially with regards to how much money you've physically taken out of any of the cash. But ultimately, the, the rules and kind of what you should be doing in an ideal world are exactly the same. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you know somebody who needs to know this information, please do share it and I'll see you in the next one.